One question I wish I got asked more often is why shouldn't I do what you do? Because I get asked, how can I do what you do without the understanding of what it, it is that I do all the time. And as much as I love to encourage people's dreams, I end up stomping on them more often than I want in just trying to share a gentle picture of the reality of what it looks like to, to be a business owner and to chase dreams and just the cost um, physically, emotionally, and to your relationships and everything else when you, when you have something that is bigger than you and you want to push it forward. There you go, that's a much more concise answer to your other question that you had. Oh my God, sorry, I'm so sorry. Hopefully that was directly in your ear hole. Yeah. I'm Anne, some people know me as Anne of All Trades and I am a woodworker, a farmer, sometimes a blacksmith, a mechanic, and all kinds of other things. But the biggest thing that I care about is learning and teaching. I live here in Nashville, Tennessee. I moved from Seattle, Washington to Nashville, Tennessee a year and a half ago and a huge impetus in wanting to move here was the people that I already knew here. Yeah, it's been there a while. Other draws to the Nashville area were that the climate was significantly sunnier than Seattle. The fact that this is a much more agriculturally focused area um, really helped me to expand my farming goals and desires. But also the people here and the food and the culture and the access to delightful hardwoods were all huge draws. Oh, and the music. Literally an entire culture around the music industry is, has been a really cool thing to experience. So I grew up in a really unconventional social situation. My parents have been full-time missionaries my entire life. Well, we as a family traveled all over the globe doing um, volunteer and missions work. And so I got to, at a very young age, experience a whole lot of different cultures and um, have a very outward focused, community focused upbringing, which has really influenced the way that I think about things today. My number one focus in everything I do is the community that I can build around that thing that I'm doing. My initial inclination for all things project-based started with my grandfather. He was a woodworker and a tinkerer of all sorts. He was a survivor of the Great Depression and so he was very into using whatever you've got to get whatever you need. And going to his place as a kid, I remember him opening up his garage doors and just thinking like, we have the tools and the know-how to do literally anything. And that was super just exciting for me. I loved tinkering around in grandpa's shop. He always made me straighten my nails for every project I wanted to do and I could only ever use scrap wood. So I got really, really good at looking at what I had and then making what I needed from it. Even as a woodworker now, I'm able to be a lot more creative when I have parameters around the things that I can do. Like, I have these pieces of wood, so I'm gonna design this whole piece of furniture based around this flaw or this beautiful thing or whatever. I got started doing projects with my grandpa, but then I took a huge diversion in my life. I had my heart set in living in a skyscraper in the middle of the city and you know, speaking other languages for the rest of my life. And that kind of came skidding to a halt about 10 years ago when my best friend in America asked me to come visit him for six months in Seattle. 10 years later, <laughs> instead of being a marketing specialist and Chinese speaking business guru, I am now a farmer and a woodworker and sometimes a blacksmith and a mechanic. The babies are so violent and then they like, when it runs out, they like ram their head up into the sack to try to like stimulate more milk flow. See, there's so many opportunities to practice Chinese while I never leave my farm in rural Tennessee. <laughs> 
觉得我的工作是很奇怪，但是我觉得，因为我是女人，这是为什么是那么重要，我做这样的工作，所以其他的女人可以看到我一个女人做很奇怪的工作。A lot of people think it's really weird that me, a woman, does this the kind of work that I do. But it's actually because I'm a woman that makes it so important for me to do that, so that other women can look at me and see that it's okay for them to do this work as well. But suddenly, when I found myself kind of stuck in Seattle, for lack of a better term, I was like, "Well, Adam has a garage, um, and Adam's my husband, by the way. <laughs> He has a garage. He has a yard. We're gonna be here for a while, so I should start trying to acquire some tools, and、um, I could plant a garden for the first time because I know I'm actually gonna be here in six months to actually see that garden come to fruition. Just kidding, that's fruition. But so I planted my first seeds. I picked up my first tools. I started flipping tools on Craigslist to be able to like buy a broken tool. I would take it apart, try to fix it, and then sell it for more money so that I could then kind of. Like hop skip my way into a better toolkit, and basically my selling point was I'll mail me your grandpa's rusty tool, and I'll make it usable again, so that you know a piece of your family history can then be used to make more beautiful stuff. I will I will never say that I'm master. I love saying I'm a beginner because I love beginning new things. But I, I've I've gotten much better at woodworking. I've had the opportunity to write for, write for and be published in over 60 magazines. I got to run a woodworking school in Seattle for three years.、Um, I've gotten to travel and teach around the country. Now I'm super intent on providing really really well thought out educational materials in an engaging. Video and online platform. My business partner Josh Nava and I have been able to teach 1,500 people this year. But I was always happy to jump at every opportunity I was given and do my absolute darndest to rise to the challenge. Look at you, buddy, you little handsome boy. Come here. Look at you. Your limp is so much better today. We can even fix it more. You're gonna.、Mm -hmm. Having grown my online following on various platforms for several years, I get asked all the time, "How do I do what you do? Like, how do I just like quit my job and you know post stuff on Instagram and get free tools and just get to do woodworking all day?" Honestly, if I knew <laughs> how to、uh, let you do that, I would also be doing it. Who's the best boy? The funny side thing that has come from building a, a business online and quitting my job so that I could, you know, stick it to the man and and do what I wanted all the time, has really forced me to die to myself and all of the things that I actually wanted. I know, I know, I know. So he has an abscess on his hook right there, and it's been bothering him real bad. But. What we'll do is we'll keep fixing it a little bit more each day. Because what I don't think very many people will tell you is that starting your own business is the quickest and fastest way to absolutely ruin everything that you love if you're not careful. I've gone through periods of burnout when I never wanted to look at another piece of wood or metal ever again. You know, in the middle of kidding season, as cute as baby goats are, after 15 days of no sleep, and you know, trying to keep animals alive under heat lamps in very difficult conditions,、uh, none of this is sunshine and rainbows. And in those moments, I could care less about any free tool I've ever gotten, or you know, any sponsored post I've ever done. If there's one thing. About having animals that is so hard is that when they're hurting, not being able to communicate with them, like and tell them that you know this won't be forever, or that this, you know, is that I'm trying to help you, is the hardest thing because so many times I have to make choices that like do hurt them in the moment, and like it breaks my heart because animals, you know, they they think about. Three things. I think about 
like food, shelter, well, I guess food and water, shelter, and then like, you know, being okay. And they don't have any kinds of time. So it's like, if they're not okay, they don't, they don't know when they're gonna be okay, or they don't know that things are gonna ever feel any different than they feel right now. I can't just be like, hey buddy, hold still, and it'll feel better in a second. And it breaks my heart. Like when I know he's hurting, watching him limping around and not being able to just like make it better for him is the worst. I imagine that some parents feel the same way about their children. You're a very good boy, howdy. You are a very good boy. Really from the very beginning, any kind of um, advertising revenue that I've gotten through having an audience, I've made a specific point of putting that money back into making a better experience for my audience. And if I didn't have other backups and backups for my backups, um, I currently have 18 different sources of revenue and only three of those are advertising based. And so um, the people that only see that side of it, unfortunately are missing a huge part of the picture. He's hurt, but that's looking so much better, buddy. Look at you standing so straight. Creator burnout is a very, very real thing and something that I have had to actively work against. Um, I'm dyslexic. I also struggle with depression and my learning disabilities didn't go away when I started using my hands to build stuff. In fact, making videos where I have to clearly and concisely communicate things is really difficult for me. Someone who can barely read and write. Um, but you know, I've found, found ways around some of those things and tricks, but I mean, even Justin's gonna have to edit this video and there's gonna be a lot more footage that you're not seeing. <laughs> from Seattle uh, that I haven't had much time to work on it this year somehow. However, just got my battery back from Greg, so let me go grab it. If I had to pick one favorite project from the last year, it would be working on my ATV. I absolutely love vehicles. I am not actually super mechanically handy. In fact, I'd, I have restored cars, but there are certain cars that I still probably couldn't change the oil in. So. My neighbor had this ATV in his woods and it had been sitting there for six years. We dragged it out. I traded him a pack of Coors Light for it. And he said, if I could get it to run, I could keep it. And so I, knowing nothing about ATVs, never even having driven one, took me three weeks to push it into the garage because I couldn't figure out how to get it out of park. So that's where we started. Ugh. And no getting it to where Let's it was a reliable oh vehicle that I could actually use on my farm was probably one of the coolest experiences in my life. I've never felt more empowered and more excited and just like, also it is so fun to ride an ATV all around my property. I mean, the speed alone is great. Getting to the other side of a project and, and seeing what was nothing and now is something makes me feel useful. It makes me feel good about myself. It makes me sm feel capable and, and strong. And that feels good. <laughs> good cat. I got to pinch the old fingies. big lofty goals and one thing that I love to do is announce them publicly so that I can be held publicly accountable for them. But right now I need to get the physical building of the School of All Trades built. The, the dreams for the school and the online platform are huge. From this location we want to eventually expand and get to another location in Nashville where we can maybe do some after school programs for inner city kids that can have the opportunity to do things with their hands and learn valuable skills that have potential to change their lives at an earlier age. From there I would love to see other physical campuses opened but ultimately the impact if I'm able to just keep inching this forward 
is potentially very large. If I can impact one life for the better, what better thing is there to do in life? My favorite part of the day is coming out to pick dinner in the garden and then taking all the animals on the walk. Growing my own food is motiv motivated more by the fact that I never ever want to have to leave the farm. Basil, celery, oregano, thyme, asparagus, lemongrass, rosemary, lavender. So of course I have to grow all of the, the ghost and the scorpion and all of the hot peppers because now I actually can. Here it's just you plant them outside and they grow. It's great. This whole garden, a lot of the stuff here is stuff that I've brought from Washington or has some special story. I really just love being able to come out and pick my dinner and then not drive my car for like six weeks. <laughs>actually a great question I don't know like I don't know if I've ever said this publicly probably not um and of all trades started as a quip against someone who told me that I wasn't ever going to be good at anything because I was trying to do too much and in some ways they were right but I've also learned through learning so many different skills the value of having range however it's called animal trades so that kind of <laughs> has to start and stop with me and um, which is also why I am now branching out and wanting to do the School of All Trades because that, while it may have started here, wants to go in a lot bigger places. And the, the daily rigors that I've put myself through the last eight years of being a business owner running, you know, a social media and education and consulting and coaching and freelance <laughs> business, has put me through or what I've put myself through the last eight years of doing all that stuff um, isn't sustainable in the long run. I have kind of a three to five year plan that's a bit of an exit strategy out of Anival Trades because I want to scale back, live a real life with real people, have a family, and hand this torch to not just someone else but a lot of other someones so that it doesn't just stop when I get burnt out or when I get tired or when I just can't anymore. There you go. Funny little side note about alpacas is that they absolutely love playing in water. I went through so many sprinklers because I would put the sprinkler out for them to play in and then they would step on it because really what they want to do is they want to put their belly in it to cool themselves off but they would just like try to get on top of the water <laughs> so Anne of all trades has been a thing for eight years now and I kind of call Anne of all trades like a, a character. It is definitely me and I, I am much more vulnerable on social media than I think a lot of my peers care to be. And that's really just more who I who I am and who I want to attract. But at the end of all of this, like with the facing burnout and depression and, and trying to overcome my own shortcomings and be a good person and a good employer and and have made a positive impact on the world. Has, is this worth it? Um, absolutely, I mean, I'm so thankful. Um, is this worth it? Is it? Um, at the end of all of this, is it worth it? For me, yes, because it has stretched me and grown me in ways that I wouldn't have been stretched and I wouldn't have grown. This handsome boy is Johnny, the love of my life. Sorry, everyone else, but he's the best boy. Much. Oh, did you want more? It's opened up doors that I genuinely had no idea even existed. I have learned skills and 
gotten the opportunity to be in rooms with people that I absolutely did not deserve to be in. But I was still so thankful for and ready to rise to the occasion. Um, so, yeah, it's worth it. It's hard, but it's worth it. <laughs> and, a <laughs> and a whole lot of other $10 words that you can <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs>